Hello everyone, this is Alfadi. Thank you again for joining us in another episode of our brand new video series that we have titled The Qibla Contradiction. And the reason why we call it this is the fact that we are presenting two contradicting views. One that we have unpacked at least a year earlier by Dan Gibson from his work on the direction of Qibla, which means the direction of prayer specifically the first 200 years of Islam and how different mosques in that era were facing different directions, not necessarily just Mecca. And then almost few months after we released that video series in April 2018, Dr. David King, who is considered to be the authority, the foremost authority in uh, the study of Qibla, uh, issued basically a scathing uh, um, you know, article to rebuke Dan Gibson's work and making really the claim that Dan Gibson, you know, literally doesn't know what he's talking about. And uh, in, uh, you know, uh, in, along the line of that, he basically came up with seven different theories as to why there are contradictions or confusion in terms of the direction of Qibla during that time, the first 200 years of Islam. Uh, myself and Dr. Jay Smith, who is with me here in studio, we have unpacked four of those theories Today we're going to continue picking it up from theory number four and keep going with the rest of these theories. Welcome back, Jay. Yeah, thanks for having me back again. Now, Al, we've talked about really the, the companions and we talked about the prophet himself and yet we don't have any reference to that. We talked about the theory that King came up with that these were based on buildings uh, and yet we couldn't find any reference to this in the 7th and 8th century, uh, that these had to do with Byzantine churches, and we're going to show some examples of that, and, we sh and then we showed the one example of where they're not following the roads, uh, and we're gonna, now we've, we've come up with the fourth theory that these had to do with solstitial lies or equinox sunsets. Um, I want to pick up from there because I have some, there, there is some difficulty with this. When you look at these, he, if you want to ask, and this is something that King does all the time, and this is something that um, I, I love what Gibbs, how Gibson responds to this. Whenever King makes a theory, he tries to support it. And he says, he says this is the case with most of the cities. So most of the cities would include how many? How many would you think most would be? A lot. Like a lot. Like, give me a number. I mean, we're not talking... What would you be satisfied with when you're saying most of the mosques are following these sacred geography of stocious lines or equinoctial Yeah, lines? When, when you say most, I'm going to think uh, percentage-wise maybe 80, 90% of them. Okay, so that'd be 80, 90 of over 100. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Guess how many we, he actually gives as an example. Let me guess. One? Three. Wow. Three. He gives three of them uh, in Cordoba, in Cairo, and Samarkand. Samarkand, because he actually went there. And Cordoba, he loves the Cordoba one because he's also going to use that to show that it follows Roman roads. We're going to see that later. Right. So he likes to use both of them. He can't make up his mind, so he uses, well, they both are following the equinox and they're following the Roman roads. So he's trying to put two together in one uh, case. Three. How many did Dan come up with? I would say the rest of them, 97%. <laughs> so, hey, when you look at what Dan came up with, he came up with over 100, and that's just what he's come up with so far. He's just got back from a trip where he's actually found new ones. He's just been told this week of yet new ones that he's going to go look at. And in every case, everyone he's looking at, and we're finding, and if any of you do find any more new moss, please call Dan, get online, go up on his website, you'll, on his YouTube site, you'll see the can books there, the uh, .ca, that, where you can get a hold of him and tell him about a new one because he is coming up with lots of new ones that he ha that he himself is now still directing and guess what he's finding in every case they follow into the four rubrics they follow into four of these categories and that's consistent and that's all consistent and that's why when you look at the dates of these mosques they all either follow into the Petra Qibla they fall into the between Qibla they fall into the Meccan Qibla and they fall into the parallel Qibla those are the four now 
So if you're coming up with only three examples of this theory, theory four, then I would suggest you need to do a little bit more work. And you might want to listen to what other people are finding. And Mount, don't still get so upset by writing a whole treatise of 52 pages to try to shut this down. Because when you write a book this line, this an article this big, to try to shut down, and all you come up with is one, two, maybe three examples of what you're talking about, then I would suggest that you might find and ask, are people believing this? Do you know of how many people I have been convinced by this argument? Do you know anybody that's been convinced? Any? Uh, after our video series, I'm not so sure any will be convinced. Well, even before our video series, I can't find in. This is one thing that Gibson has said. Show me anybody that's convinced by that. Because to me, this is even more ridiculous than what he said earlier. Uh, so it's suggesting to me that this is desperation. But let's continue on. Let's continue on. It's really my hope that uh, some of his own students or other new scholars, you know, up and coming scholars, that they will take this, you know, as a topic of research that is worthy to visit these mosques and do new research on that. Okay. Gibson, before we move on from theory four, does say, you know, these are all ninth century and later theories. This theory is, was only created in the ninth century. It's way too late. Uh, and it's nothing more than a theory. And it's nothing more than a, a, a frustration on their part. Show me something from the seventh and eighth century. Go to the mosque and see if they follow this. Why, and you can't just come up with three of them. You've got to come up with a lot more than that to show that there is a pattern here. There's no pattern here. The only patterns we're finding are what Gibson found himself. Let's go to theory number five. They built more or less due south in Jordan or Syria. And he says the mosques in Jordan and Syria all face due south, which is close to Mecca. Now, stop and think that one through. I mean, that one is a no-brainer for me. <laughs> you can see almost immediately the problem with that theory. If they're in Syria and in Jordan, which is up here, Petra is here, Mecca is here, they're more or less facing due south. Therefore, they're facing Mecca. Well, I mean, it's almost like uh, if, if you're facing Chicago, you can say you are facing Kansas City along the way, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's the same, same thing. I mean, when, when you have these cities lined up, what is the, uh, I mean, uh, I would say, what are the chances that Petra is always along the line, whether you're south in Sana'a facing north, or in this case, north facing south? Why is Petra is always in a line? No, uh, because both Petra and Mecca are south of Jordan and Syria. <laughs> that's kind of obvious. And that's why he has to use the word more or less. And that's the problem. Gibson's not using that word more or less. He's not saying it's more or less, this is Petra. Uh, because he has data. He's giving the exact dimensions. He's giving the exact uh, margin of error. He's giving, he is right up there and saying within 2% of error, whereas within 15 to 20%, they're not facing Mecca. Within 2 to 3%, they're facing Petra. Now, to me, which would you rather go with? The, the data that is on the ground that shows that these are almost exactly facing Petra, or are you going to still go with the more or less? More or less, I'll go with the data. <laughs> I would rather go with the data. And I think anybody who is watching this, the, uh, this should be something that we need to be careful of. Even as Christians, we're scholars, uh, we have to be careful that we are not trying to fall back on what is imprecise. Because if you're going to fall exactly. back on what's imprecise, then you're going to have a hard time convincing anybody. I don't know how many of you have been convinced by uh, King's argument so far. And that's why, you know, uh, what I love about uh, Jay is that we have references for people. I mean, you see Jay all the time. We're putting these slides in front of you, and we're showing you where you can find this quotation from, what page, what reference, which year it was written. But this is important. It's, it's all about credibility. Because this came up when he first came out with his first book on, uh, on Quranic geography. He was uh, criticized for this, for saying, you know, you're just saying that these are more or less, that these are facing Petra, but who's to say they're not really facing Mecca as well? And that's why when you go up and you look at his book and you look online, when you look at every one of his categories, whenever he looks at a mosque, what does he do? Let me just get the mosques here. You will see that in every case, he always puts these dials, four dials. You see these four dials? So that one is the actual mosque. Here is Petra, here is Mecca, here is Jerusalem. So he's showing which exactly is the one that's facing which. Here's another one over here, four dials to show each one. This is the Grand Mosque in Susa. And you can see that it's obviously that this one is facing 
in this case, Mecca. It's also, in this case, it's facing Mecca. So these later ones are facing Mecca. But when you go to all the earlier ones, you can see that they almost directly face Petra. And that's why it's so important that you get the dials. Now, Dan is the only one that's done this. Why is it the king didn't do this? This idea of more or less is so inexact. He's not showing it. He's not actually even proving it by actually putting in other other directions to for people visually to see which it is closer to. Dan has put everything out there in this book and that's why he's he's so much more credible because he's willing for people to even confront him if he's got it wrong. I'm afraid, you know, uh, Jay, that there is an attempt here. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm not insinuating that that's Dr. King's agenda, but it seemed like Dr. King is using his clout, the fact that he is the foremost authority in the world about this topic. Somehow by plugging his name into an argument, people will gravitate towards his argument and ignore facts and data. Do you feel like this is what's going on here? Yeah, and we're going to come to this conclusion at the end of this episode. I want to come to those conclusions. I want to ask you, why is it that King has been giving these theories? And we're going to, I'm, I'm going to agree with you on this. But before we get to that, let's just go with, with theory number five. So theory number five starts from the premise that they were built, these kibbles were built facing due west in India. Uh, you mean theory six, I'm sorry. So, did I say? Uh, yeah, uh, you said five. This, this is six. Um because we just finished five. We did Jordan five. See, it's yeah. a good thing you're here to correct me. <laughs> how many times have you corrected me, showing how that I'm getting senile, I think, in my yeah, old age? Don't worry. Some of our Muslim friends are going to take these clips and put a series on that. <laughs> <laughs> God bless them. The more they can keep, humble me, the better it'll be for my wife. <laughs> Theory six, built facing due west in India and due east in North Africa. Now, uh, stop and think. Due west from India, well, isn't Mecca and Petra both due west? Yes. So, okay, so he's correct on that. And due east in North Africa, if you're in North Africa, they would be due east, right? And Petra and Mecca also east. <laughs> so what's but the point? <laughs> the point is he didn't look at Gibson's, Gibson's material. It's obviously he didn't look which mosque he's talking about. So if you're in India, he's talking about the Shadaman Mosque. It is facing due west. But it is not facing Mecca. It is facing directly towards Petra. That's what Gibson's saying. It's not good enough to say they're facing due west. That's the problem. You need to be more precise than that. You've got to go and see what they're facing. And for heaven's sakes, go to Shadman, go to India, measure it. Since you haven't been there, King, for heaven's sakes, take my word for it, I've been there. Unless you can go there and find G GPS that are different, if you, unless you can go and do the, using the Aster satellite, which is the most precise one in the world today, put by the Japanese, unless you can find something that better is my own material, don't just say it faces due west. No, that's not right. good enough. It faces northwest, not due west. It faces quite a bit northwest. And when you look at the trajectory, it goes almost exactly right to Petra. That's how exact they are. North Africa, there's all kinds of mosques in North Africa, but none of them are facing east. We've already said where they're facing. They're facing they're south. Feral. Yeah. So south. Where is this idea that due east in North Africa? No, they're not, dear man. And I don't know where he's, he's just contradicting himself because, I mean, he admits the Cordoba Mosque, which is in Spain, is not facing east. It's facing yeah. south. I mean, he's probably talking about Egypt, but that's one out of many in North Africa anyway. I mean, this is why, you know, Gibson, I, I, when I read this, I had to start laughing. I said, is this man really reading? Did he really read that? Did he really say that? Is he really reading his own text? So I have a real problem with Theory 6. Let's go to Theory 7, because Theory 7 is much the exact same problem again. So here are three complete series, theories that follow the same premise. The boss that are built in north, due north in Yemen and East Africa. So built more or less due north in Yemen and East Africa. Well, the only one in Yemen I know of that is earlier than the ninth century is the Sanam Mosque. And the Sanam Mosque, actually, when you look at the Sanam Mosque, it goes very close to Mecca, but it goes right up to Petra. Because in order for the Sanam Mosque to touch Petra, it has to go close to Mecca. So that is more or less due north. That's true. But don't just stop at Mecca. Continue on. That's right. And see where it ends. Exactly. It goes right to Petra. Now, the one in East Africa, I don't know what mosque he's talking about there, because in the, uh, the first, up to the ninth century, there is no mosque that I'm aware of in East Africa. So if he's talking about an East African mosque after the ninth century, well, all of them are facing Mecca. 
because from uh, starting with the Abbasid period from 749, well, actually starting with 727, from 727, you will see mosques starting to face Mecca. So I would say even by the mid 8th century, you're already getting mosques. So possibly he's talking, he see, here's the problem. He doesn't name what mosque he's talking about here. Yeah. Uh, and Gibson gets a little frustrated with this in his videos. He says, I wish he'd name what he's referring to. He talks about a mosque in that Creswell and Fetavadi found in 1905, uh, that one was in a tour in Iraq and one was in Egypt. I don't know what mosque he's talking about. Now, I happen to know what mosque he's talking about. He's talking about the Wasat and the Kufa mosque in Iraq, which are facing due west. And he's talking about the Fustat mosque that's facing due east. And of course, they thought this, they were facing Jerusalem because they didn't have adequate technology to know how, that they were off by three to five degrees. Gibson went to those mosques and he found, he went physically to them and he found out exactly where they were facing. All three of those mosques, this was at one, because one is much later, but two of them were facing Petra. The other one was facing Mecca because it was built much later. So um, can you understand then why this is frustrating when you start to get these kind of answers? Either King is purposely de deceiving, which I don't think he is, I think he means well, or he's just, again, not looking at the facts on the ground. He doesn't want to deal with Dan Gibson. He doesn't want to look at what Gibson has found. And this is where I think you're right. I think if you're standing in this man's uh, shoes, I think there is something here, a real frustration that's going on. Uh, and there's a real desperation because he's seen everything that he has worked for, everything he's made his name on, all his books that have been written. He cannot rewrite those books. He cannot go back and change his theories. He's too old to do that. So what do you do? You have to ad hominem, unfortunately. And or say that. more or less. But I mean, isn't this academia, Jay? I mean, uh, we always built upon the work of those who preceded us. Yeah. What is wrong with that? Why? Why is it wrong for someone who comes after me, and even if I'm still alive, and I discover that they have either found some new data that either back or contradict what I've done? Yeah. I mean, more or less is, I mean, and you can see why he has to say that. When you look at, let's, let's say the Sana Mosque, which is the one he's talking about here. The Sana Mosque, mosque as I remember, is 0.36 of a degree off from Petra, 8.8 .8 of a degree off from Mecca. More or less, 8.8 .8 is more or less, you're true. But specifically, 0.36, that's less than a degree off right. from Petra. That's a lot more accurate which suggests to me, built in 705, that it's exactly facing Petra. And so that's why, in his case, he cannot get by, not in academia anymore. And, you know, we need to be careful that we don't fall into the same kind of trap. Okay. But I think it's very clear here that Gibson really has come onto something here. Gibson really knows what he's talking about. Gibson has done the work. And uh, what I'd like to do is, before we leave this subject, I'd like to still look at six mosques that King brings up and just take a look at them and see what we find with those six mosques. And that would be uh, the topic for our next episode. Hopefully everyone is enjoying this series and we thank you for tuning in. Until we meet again next week, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. Please like our video and we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sierra International. And be sure also to click the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we upload new videos into the channel. And finally, I like to prayerfully encourage you to become a patron through Patreon. Your giving is much needed and will enable us to produce more and more of videos like this so that we can publish them on a weekly basis. So thank you in advance.